So let's take a look at problem number six, which talks about an explosion. Explosion sounds all interesting, but here's our physics definition for an explosion. When objects start together, then push each other apart. Maybe not quite as exciting as you thought it might be. Let's go ahead and write that down either in our notes or here on the problem set. And once you have that, go ahead and read the set up for problem six, but don't do anything with it. We'll do it together. So this is a different type of explosion, right? So the boy says something stupid, the girl pushes, they push away from each other, and that means they, they explode away from each other. They start together and push each other apart. And before we do any of the math involved here, let's really analyze this and break it down. So the girl pushes on the boy, and we know at the exact same moment what else happens. Well, Newton's third law says that the boy has to push back with an equal and opposite force. So in our notes, because we're not going to have room there on the problem set, in our notes, let's write this down. The force on the girl is equal and opposite to the force on the boy. Whether he wants to or not, he has to push back with an equal and opposite force. That's just how the universe works. Okay, so you're imagining they're pushing on each other. Now, which object, girl or boy, is pushing on the other for a longer amount of time? Pause the video and think that through. Well, I hope you come to the conclusion that they have to push for the same amount of time. There's literally no way one optic could push on the other for a longer amount of time. What would that even look like, right? They have to be pushing for the same amount of time. That means we can multiply both sides of this equation by the same time of interaction, delta t. And why are we doing that? Well, look at this. Force times delta t, we should recognize what's that equal to. Sure, that's the equation for impulse. So that means that we can say the impulse on the girl is equal and opposite to the impulse on the boy. They receive equal and opposite impulses. But what's the other name for impulse? Right, change of momentum. That means that the change of momentum of the girl is equal and opposite to the change of momentum of the boy. They move in opposite directions, they get equal and opposite changes in momentum. Now together, the girl and the boy create a system. So I'm going to add delta PB to both sides. Now we have delta PG plus delta PV, would mean delta P total. Well, that's equal to zero. This is a rather important statement. It says the total momentum in the system doesn't change. Well, we have a word for that in physics, right? That's called conservation. This then says that the total momentum in the system before is the total momentum in the system afterwards, or the total momentum in the system is conserved. It doesn't change throughout the interaction. This is the law of conservation of linear momentum. Again, I put linear in parentheses. It's usually just the law of conservation of momentum, but I just want to remind you there's going to be a different type of momentum later on in the year. So how is this law stated? It says the vector sum of all linear momenta in an isolated system is conserved throughout any interaction, meaning before the interaction, during the interaction, and after the interaction. Let's break down some of the parts of this. First, we have momenta. What is momenta? Hopefully you know that's the plural of momentum. When words have a Latin root as such, and we pluralize them, the U-N becomes an A, right? So more than one gymnasium, sure, gymnasium. More than one pendulum, pendulum. More than one aquarium, aquaria. More than one auditorium, auditorium. More than one stadium. Stadium, right? More than one hum. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. That's a pretty bad physics joke. It's not even a physics joke. It's just a, a linguistic joke. Anyway, let's go on to another part here about isolated systems. So what do you mean by an isolated system? This means that there's no net external force. So as long as we're only looking at internal forces, the objects interacting with each other, in the system, we can have total momentum being conserved which is why the set of problems we're looking at here are all going to be taking place on what we consider to be frictionless ice. Imagine we take a physics field trip to the frictionless ice rink. Now, of course, we know there's no such thing, but in our physics world, let's just pretend there is. This is the word version of the law of conservation of the momentum. You're going to box it in as a big idea. But now let's look at the equation version. It says that the individual momenta add up to the same total before and afterwards, or m1v1 plus m2v2 plus dot 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 for however many objects there are in the system equals m1v1 prime plus m2v2 prime. 
these symbols that look like apostrophes are read as prime. It's just another way of indicating something in the after situation. We could put noughts and f's on these, but then the subscripts tend to stack up. And so this is a very standard way of writing uh, when something happens afterwards. It's a prime notation. So on the left-hand side, that's all the stuff beforehand. The right-hand side, that's all the stuff afterwards. And we'll box this in as the equation version of the law of conservation of momentum. Now, if we relate this to the way Newton originally wrote his second law, sigma f equals delta p over delta t, we can see that everything agrees. An isolated system has no net external force. That means that sigma f equals zero. If sigma f equals zero, that means that delta p equals zero, and that's what we said over here. The total change of momentum of the system is zero. All right, so now let's apply this to problem number six. So here's our before picture. I want you to go ahead and draw the after picture, draw them separating away from each other. Just stick figures are fine. So in the before picture, they're looking at each other, staring at each other's eyes, falling in love, and they push each other away. The horizontal line is the surface of the ice, and they're going to push each other away. And here's the after situation. The girl goes sailing off one direction. The boy goes sailing off in the opposite direction. The girl, we're listing as m1, and the boy is m2. And so in the after situation, we've labeled their velocity v1 prime for the girl, v2 prime for the boy. Now remember, everything in momentum is vectors, and so we're going to need to establish a positive direction. Also, maybe you want to draw their broken heart. Uh, it's, it's completely arbitrary, which we call the positive direction. So for purposes of this, let's say, for example, left is the positive direction. And now we write out the law of conservation of momentum. And notice what I'm doing here. I'm putting the equal sign right there on the dividing line. So m1 v1 plus m2 v2, that's all momentum in the before situation, before they push away, before they explode. M1 v1 prime plus M2 v2 prime is the total momentum afterwards, after the interaction. And the dividing line down the middle goes right through the equal sign. Now, before anything was happening, they were just standing still on the ice, which means that they weren't moving, they had no momentum in the system to begin with, so that's just going to be zero. For the after situation, well, we know some of the numbers. We're just going to go right ahead and substitute them in. We know her mass is 50 kilograms, and we know she moves off at a speed of 2 meters per second, in this case to the left, and we call that positive, so let's put that positive sign on it. We know his mass is 75 kilograms, we don't know his velocity, so we're just going to leave it as V2 prime. Now at this point, you may be tempted to say, well look, left is positive, he's clearly going to the right, why don't we call this negative V2 prime? Don't do that. Leave it as just a variable, and then just let the algebra work it all out. And if you do proper algebra, you should get a sign on your answer that agrees with reality. So at this point, it's just algebra, so go ahead and solve. And you should have no trouble getting V2 prime is negative 1.33 meters per second. Why is it negative? Well, this should make sense, right? If we call that positive and he's going to the right, we should expect a negative sign. So everything seems to be working out just fine. Let's try another problem. Let's go on to problem seven. Go ahead and read that. We'll go through the same sequence of events. The picture initially is drawn. There you are, with the book in hand, ready to throw it. You're going to be throwing the book to the right. And so I want you to just go ahead and sketch out the picture in the after situation. Again, stick figures are fine. Doesn't have to be a huge artistic achievement. There we go, right? So the book goes one way, in this case to the right, and you are going to recoil the other way, right? We're going to find your recoil velocity. To recoil is just to move backwards in this case. We want to establish a positive direction, because obviously objects are moving in opposite directions. And so I'm going to call again left positive. There's really no reason to call left or right positive. In fact, if you want to instead call right positive, that's fine. In the end, your sign will just agree with that, and everything's going to be the same. U are defined as m1, so you have a final velocity v1 prime. The book is m2, so its final velocity is v2 prime. And now we're going to write out the law of conservation of momentum again. m1 v1 plus m2 v2 equals m1 v1 prime plus m2 v2 prime. How much momentum is in the system beforehand? Well, the whole point is that you were stuck on the ice. If you were already moving, you could have just waited to get off the ice, which means that there was no momentum in the system to begin with. So let's go ahead and put all of our numbers in and solve. Now, we call left positive, and you're pushing the book to the right, or really, you're pushing the book north, and that means you call it south positive, according to the directions given in the problem. And since the book is going the opposite direction of the positive, yes, we do put the sign on this, because we have the quantity. It's moving at 10 meters per second, 
that's opposite to our positive direction, so we do put the negative sign on it. In the end, we should be getting V1 prime as positive 0.333 meters per second. We do need that positive sign on it because, of course, we're looking for magnitude and direction. Remember, the positive is not implied. I know it's been a while since we did all the stuff with vectors, but we need to put that sign or the word for the direction to get full credit.